Hey guys, I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking a little walk with me for just a moment. I just want to share a little bit on my heart because I think as we, you know, kind of go forward, uh, I want to give kind of a little bit of a vision statement, if you will, some kind of a thought process that would help you kind of get the feel for what, you know, what micro churches are all about. You know, when I look at the way the church is going, and I'm not trying to dog a church, I mean, I helped plan a church that seen thousands and thousands of people come to Christ and baptized and incredible things have happened but it's been becoming apparent there's a little bit of a weakness in the, the church that we see around us in that it, it's kind of like okay we can get together and we can have this big thing we can have youth groups and we can have Bible studies and all that but Jesus didn't say to go have youth groups and Bible studies and and not that those, any of those are wrong their mechanisms but he wanted us to make disciples now so I think when you look at look at what's going on with micro churches uh, micro churches is a word or a name that we use so so that people will kind of understand it's a little different and it needs to be different it's an expression of God, and, and I believe it's necessary now, especially in the day and the time that we live in. I mean, we, we live in a time where, you know, uncertainty and who do you trust and all kinds of issues are out there. Uh, but what's the difference? Well, why is the microchurch just a mini church? Not in the church, not in the sense that we think of church. Uh, microchurch is, is very different in that we want to see it as there's three components. There's three components that are weak in the church today that we want to strengthen. Uh, one, one is the area, and the most important, I think, is the movement and the ability to move and operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's got to be there. We need to train people how to operate in discipleship. We need to train people how to function when uh, they, all the lights are out, let's say, and then the world gets kind of tore up. Uh, we need to train people how to function in the Holy Spirit. So that, that's, that comes by anointing, that comes by up close personal sharing, that comes by small group thinking, that comes from uh, being very intimate with people in a safe environment, in transparency, authenticity, and all those things that we talk about in discipleship. Um, but the other thing is outreach. Outreach, we're getting better at it, but outreach in a way to be able to do discipleship is, is kind of lacking. Uh, one of the things we're working with here in Port Charlotte area is with a, a homeless ministry, a huge one, as a matter of fact, and um, there's a lot of things that, that I'll be working with in that, I believe, that could benefit the kingdom of God, but the goal is not just to help the homeless population, but the goal is more how do we make disciples and how do I train people to, to do what God's called them to do, so uh, that's, a, that's a big issue, so that, that's going on. The outreach is component, but it's for discipleship, because uh, that's the other component that seems to be lacking sometimes in, in churches as the ability to disciple people because we're looking for so many people, multitudes are coming. Um, discipleship's not made that way. You can't make disciples in mass. They're not cookie cutter. They're building relationships. And relationships, of course, build on trust. So when you think of a, a micro church, think of it in terms of maybe three couples getting together, working through their lives issues and getting that going and getting closer to Jesus and then maybe a fourth couple joins them and then that couple breaks off and um, forms another group because it's not about making this group bigger and bigger. Matter of fact, you get to four couples, that's pretty hard. Um, you know, Jesus could do it with 12 guys, but we're not Jesus. But the idea behind this is that we want to be able to do what Jesus has called us to do in our generation. So just remember there's three main components with that. We've got we got the idea that uh, we need to increase discipleship making. That's, that's critical. We need to be able to function under the Holy Spirit better. Um, and you can't really do that in mass organizational big building thing. Um, there's not enough time and it gets kind of hard. Uh, but I'm saying we do need to celebrate. We need to have churches to go to and to fellowship and worship. But in reality, God's doing an expression that's very different. So when the church, micro churches get bigger than, or up to four couples, there needs to be a break off and there needs to be another one going. It's not to build a club that you feel good about yourself and you're safe. Now you gotta go find unsafe people to be around. You just want to be able to make disciples and do outreach and show people by modeling an outreach what Jesus did and that's what he did. So outreach is a big component. Um, the corporate celebration is probably smaller component maybe once a month, maybe once a quarter, all the microchurches get together. But just remember that the idea behind this is not to see how many people we can cram in somebody's house, 
but how can we make disciples best and most effectively? Three couples may be a lot, um, but you got to have people. <laughs> you got to. You got to. But I think God will give us wisdom. So let me pray for you, Father. I just pray for my brothers and sisters that you would give them the ability to know how and when to do what you called us to do. I pray, Father, that there would be a, a sense that. Uh, you're calling them to a deeper walk with you. And Father, I pray for the church today, no matter what happens, that we would follow you hard. We would follow you hard after you. And Father, no matter what happens in our world today, in the uncertainty, the church will survive and thrive. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you guys. I'll talk to you later.